All right, hello everyone and welcome to our kind of last few lectures, right, of the History 110 course. And we're getting to the point of the little tutors. Uh, you know, we left off last time with Henry VIII, and of course Henry VIII had three children that I mentioned in the last lecture, uh, Edward, Mary, and Elizabeth. And so what we're going to do is kind of go through the story of all three of them. I'm just going to do kind of three short lectures on this for you guys, one on Edward, one on Mary, and one in Elizabeth. And that will be the order that these three children rule. Um, even though, as if you remember, Edward was the youngest of the three, right? And so let's go to our first slide here and talk about, of course, Henry VIII. And so Henry VIII dies in 1547. And when he had died, he had those three children. And the whole deal was, even though Edward was the youngest, he was the boy. And the way the hereditary system works in English history, until very recently, as in like the last 10 years recently, it was always the eldest male who inherited. Uh, females could become monarchs of England, but if there was a boy, the boy gets the title first. Um, so in this case, of course, his son, Edward, even though he was the youngest, he's the one who takes over. And this is not gonna be a very easy time for England over the next, you know, 10, 15 years. Some, some historians have referred to this as kind of the mid-Tudor crisis period, in fact, because there were several issues that are going to make things challenging for England during these years. And so we're going to go through again all three of them. This short video is just going to be on Edward, and then I'll do the next one on Mary, and then the last one on Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is kind of where I, I do the last lecture in my History 110 class. So here we go. Uh, Edward VI, so you can see he didn't rule for very long. And remember last time I also showed you the picture of Edward VI, and I made the point, if you look at him carefully, you know, he looks, you know, very thin, very frail. He was often a sickly child. And look at the dates when he ruled. And they always tell my students, you don't need to memorize dates, as I've said all semester, but you do want to know t rough time periods and, and how long and lengths and things like that. And he's, he's only, you know, um, for, first of all, he's only nine years old when he becomes the king, so he's very young when he becomes king. And you can see he only rules for, what, about seven, eight years there. So he's not ruling very long. Now, the other issue is when you're a child, obviously, you can't govern a kingdom. And so what happens during the reign of uh, Edward, very often you have what we call a regent or a lord protector. In this case, it was a man named Edward Seymour. So that's the first name you see there, Edward Seymour. Um, the name should look familiar from the previous lecture because Edward Seymour, of course, his, um, the, the mom of Edward Seymour was Jane Seymour. Edward Seymour was his uncle. And so again, this is in some random person that they found. So Edward Seymour, he becomes kind of the regent, the Lord Protector. And one of the core issues, I don't spend a lot of time on Edward VI for my class, and of course you can always find a lot more information on all these folks, um, but one of the core issues that's gripping England during this time, remember, is what we talked about in the previous lecture, the whole Protestant Reformation. And so the Protestant Reformation had gripped, you know, Europe, it had gripped England, England, you know, Henry VIII, of course, broke away, created the Anglican Church, the Church of England. And there was a lot of division in England uh, between the Protestants and the Catholics and Edward Seymour, as well as many other people in England, were concerned about that. And so one of the attempts of Edward Seymour was to try to encourage a little bit more kind of can we get the British people to work together a little bit on this? And so Thomas Kramer, Thomas Kramer, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time, Thomas Kramer had an idea. And the idea was to create a new book called the Book of Common Prayer. And you can see it's 1549 there. And the idea of the Book of Common Prayer was to try to get everybody in England, whether you're a Protestant or you're a Catholic, to read it, to kind of bridge the, the two uh, versions of the Christian faith and try to have a more kind of way that everyone can understand all the, the, the information and everyone can kind of get along a little bit better. Didn't really do too much um, from what I, my accounts of what I read on it, but it was at least some sort of an attempt. At the end of the day, you know, Edward Seymour is not the king, remember. He is just the regent. So you're, you've kind of entered a moment where England has a young child, 
as the king. Edward Seymour is the regent. They're dealing with the Reformation. They're trying to solve it. But as you're going to see, when Edward Seymour, Edward VI dies, and he dies at a very young age, you know, things aren't going to get better, right? And one of the things to keep in mind is Edward never has a son, right? Edward is too young to have a son. And so since he doesn't have a son, the rulership is going to fall to his half-sister, right? And the eldest half-sister that he has is Mary. And that's going to be the next lecture because when Mary Tudor comes in, Mary, of course, is very different in the sense that Mary is going to embrace the Catholic faith. And so this conflict between the Catholics and the Protestants is going to move up a notch. And it's going to start to get not too fun for some people inside of England during this time. So that's all you really need to know about Edward VI. Again, not too much about him, uh, but as long as you know those few things and kind of, again, he didn't have a huge rulership. There were, of course, other things he's going to do as he gets a little bit older, uh, but you can take a whole course on Tudor history and learn a lot more about all that. But that's all the basics I want you to know for this uh, particular lecture. All right, so we'll go on with his half-sister, um, Mary, and that's coming up in the next lecture. All right, hope all that's clear. Thank you.